bit. But just to give you guys a little um, backside and stuff on myself, my name is Gerard Dowse. Uh, I own and operate a uh, full production media company here in the uh, Tampa Bay area. And pretty much what that uh, consists of is everything on the scale of like photography and videography combined. So if you look at like stuff like multimedia, like slideshows, presentations, graphics, all the way up to uh, full scale video productions and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> And, I, and I'm glad that Ms. Collins and stuff reached out to me. Uh, she said that pretty much this seminar here is on um, finding your passion. And finding out things that you guys just love and enjoy doing and stuff like that. And uh, just a little bit of backstory on myself. I went to school. I grew up here in South St. Pete. Went to St. Pete High School. I went off to college at Florida A&M University. But I didn't graduate college. I ended up dropping out of college and stuff like that my junior year. Um, a lot like you guys, I had a lot of like um, trials and tribulations and stuff like that going on in my personal life. And I decided to leave college early in order to pursue just a career, and at the time, what was retail management. So I, my, my thing is I was more so driven just by the money of things. Like I was young, but I was ready to grow up quick. I was like, okay, you know, I know I'm in college, but at the end result, you leave college just to get a job and get money. I was like, okay, I can leave now and just get a job and start making this money, and then life will be great. But I did that for about seven years, and actually life wasn't great. I mean, um, if you ask yourself which is most important, money, or happiness, now I would tell you happiness, peace, all of that stuff. But back then, I was young, I was like, okay, I want a new car, I want a house, I want this, I want that. And in order to want all that stuff, you need money. And so I was driven just by the money of things, and, and really what it is, is when you're driven by the money of things, you lose sight of you know, your, your happiness or your peace or the things that, that make you happy or bring you that peace and that happiness and that joy. So what I realized was, um, in the midst of working in retail management, I started losing my identity. Everything started becoming like cookie cutter to where it's like wake up in the morning, you go to work, you go to lunch, you get off work, you come home, go to sleep, and then repeat and do it all over again the next day. Even though I had an exciting job, I was working in retail, I was in the malls, there was always something going on, but it's, like I said, I was starting to lose my identity. And so I was like, man, this isn't, this isn't, the, my quality of life wasn't there. I was like, this isn't for me. Like, what is it? You know, I was like, at the time, I was maybe 26, 27, and I was looking at it, I was like, I don't want to become 30 and still working in retail, you know? So I was like, man, I only have a few years left. But I, that was just, I did, I was just kind of manifesting in the back of my head, but I didn't take any action on it at the time. So then just what I realized was like, outside of work, I was doing things that I was just like, I could do all day, like little hobbies and little knickknacks and stuff. And for me, that's like engine building. I'm real big into like motorcycles and like like gardening, crabs, just being outdoors, all that kind of stuff. Stuff that I would do like on my days off. And so what I realized was like one day, and it's crazy, like I had no plan on what I was gonna do with my life and stuff. But like I say, I was 27, and I'm 32 now. But I was like, I don't wanna continue doing this for the rest of my life. So literally, it was like a Saturday evening, we were closing up the mall and stuff like that. And I was just like, listen, this is it. Today is my last day. I don't know what it was, but like that light bulb went off. I like, today is my last day here. Effective immediately. I put in my resignation. I left the keys to the store, and that was it. I quit. I didn't have a plan. I didn't have any money saved. I didn't have anything going. So, but I was just like, I'm gonna give myself the weekend and just kind of rejuvenate. But then come Monday, uh, my idea was, okay, the same 40 to 50 hours that I was spending a week in this establishment working and stuff like that all of my ideas, all of my creativity, everything that I had going, I was like, well, come Monday, let's say you wake up the same, eight o'clock, nine o'clock, clock in, but then now invest these ideas and energies and stuff like that into myself. So then it was, okay, what can I do now that I enjoy doing, but I do on my own terms? At, in the beginning, it was just like, okay, now I just need to pay the bills. What can I do that's fun, that's exciting, that's energetic, but then I can also do that I enjoy doing, but that'll pay the bills. So then um, what I did was I came up with, at the time, like fitness training and stuff like that was real big. So I wanted to get my certification so I could become just a personal trainer. I was real big into like working out and doing all that kind of fun stuff, like um, like cardio, helping people like lose weight and stuff. So I got into that. Um, having the experience and stuff like that from like retail management and stuff, I was also selling shoes on like eBay and like, like Facebook, like marketplace and stuff. And then I also, um, I just had kind of like a small passion and hobby for like photography and stuff. So I was like doing like little photo shoots with uh, the shoes and the stuff that I was wearing and then helping take the pictures from like my fitness clients as well as like the, the shoes that I was selling. 
So they all kind of just tied into each other. So at the time, I was really just kind of just hustling just to make sure I could pay my car payment, have food and stuff like that, to eat and pay the bills. And I had a son at the time who was um, still in private school and all that kind of stuff. So I literally had like, my expense column was here, but then I just quit my job and I don't have any money saved. My income column was like zero. So I was just like, just hustling and bustling and stuff like that to get through. And then fast forward, maybe like a year or two years into that, I noticed like um, my desire and passion and stuff like that that I have for creating just created like so photos, videos, short films, all of that kind of stuff, it outweighed the other two. But not saying I didn't still have that same passion for like fitness and, and reselling like uh, clothing and shoes and stuff, but it outweighed it. And then I had a lot of colleagues and friends that were like, man, you're talented, you're good at it, it comes natural to you. You should start investing more energy into just photography. And I was like, no, but it's like the other stuff is making money and this and this and this. And I was like, don't do it, don't do it. And then I was like, it actually makes sense. So I was like, I could invest all of my energy right now into just my camera, my, my craft, and perfecting everything that's dealing with like photography and video related aspects. And so what I noticed was literally as I did that and I gave 100% of my efforts into photography, it seemed like overnight. Like everything that I had like on my agenda within my three year and five year plan, it seemed like within the first year, I was full steam just running. And, I, and I, I attribute that, most majority of that, to that concept that I had when I first started, saying that if I invest a full 40 hour work week into myself, into my creativity, into my brand, into just being free and allowing myself to create, imagine how quickly or how fast that will blossom. So if you look at it, and I, and I use this analogy all the time, is you know right now your, your thoughts are like seeds, right? So imagine if you sow good seeds and good thoughts into yourself or to just becoming uh, productive or successful or just whatever, now it's a seed. So if you plant that seed in good soil, but once you start to water that seed, and so for me, watering that seed would say, okay, everything, I'm putting it all into photography. I'm going to invest all the money that I make back into photography and buy new gear. I'm going to invest in networking. I'm going to invest my time in, in finding out things and learning things and getting different certificates and trainings, all of that stuff. So that was me watering those seeds. So I was saying, okay, I know I wanted a studio, I wanted this, I wanted to do certain things, and I wanted to have things published and all of that stuff. And by watering those seeds, all of that stuff, it seemed like you know these seeds started to sprout and stuff like that almost overnight. So my first pub published photo shoot that I was telling the young lady over here was actually with Mayor Prosman, which is uh, the mayor of St. Pete. So my first published photo shoot, so I'm like, okay, I know I wanted to get published, I wanted to have things in the newspapers, magazines and etc. And so the first opportunity that I got was like almost like a huge, one of the biggest public figures and stuff like that here in the city. And I was like, me, I'm all photographers and stuff like that. And then I was like, this image is gonna be seen by so many people. And then again, by networking, I was like, to be able to tie a circle and stuff like that with the, uh, the mayor of St. Pete was amazing. And then, like I said, like everything started to fall into place, started to fall into place. And then, you know, fast forward five years now, I've been running and operating this business and stuff, and a lot of the accolades and people that I've been able to meet and things I've been able to accomplish, I've been able to travel more, and, and it's just amazing. But it's literally, it just came off the, the concept of saying, you know, what's something that you just enjoy doing, you know? And then, how can I make a business out of it? Or how can I use something I enjoy doing to generate revenue. So then that way, every morning that you wake up to technically go to work, it'll never feel like work. So like this morning, I woke up, I was interjecting to come here, I had ideas, I'm driving over, I'm like, how am I gonna give this presentation? What speech am I gonna give? You know, how can I use my, my story, my testimony, stuff like that to help motivate you guys? So I'm just like, man, this is cool because again, I tell people all the time, like even though this is technically like my job, the only like physically like work that I feel like I do on a day-to-day -day basis is like, invoicing, emails, the computer stuff. But outside of that, this is this is what I do. So I'm out filming or I'm out networking or mingling or taking photos or capturing video and that kind of stuff. So even like this coming Thursday, I have a concert that's in Orlando that I'll be covering and stuff like that. But it's like imagine being at like a big, you know, full production concert and stuff like that, but this is your work, this is your job. Um, even like I say, even on a personal side, like I enjoy like engine building and motorcycles and and crafts and all that kind of stuff. So I was even like, if I can turn this and create something or build a motor or uh, produce a motorcycle and then somebody comes along on the back and buys it, what I was doing for fun, 
now they're generating revenue, so it's technically work, but it's not, not like the, the conventional scale of work that we're used to and stuff like that. So before we uh, proceed, uh, does anybody have like any questions or anything like that for me? Yeah, yeah, so man, it's crazy because a lot of people in, in my line of work sometimes only focus on just like one avenue. But what I noticed was I was good at just many. So uh, music videos, I've done bursts, I've done weddings, I've done uh, concerts, uh, events, you know, you name it. Anything that I can capture that's like a good memory or a moment, I'll capture it, edit it, and then, you know, now this memory or this moment will be captured and stuff like that forever. And you'll be able to go back and watch it and stuff too. But yeah, music videos, um, I've done like vlogs, like testimonials, things for companies, corporate work, commercials. I've even had a few of my commercials and stuff like that be aired on like Bright House and stuff locally, which is very, very cool. Um, but I say all that to say uh, today, actually what we're gonna do is I brought a lot of my equipment and stuff like that that I use in my day to day. And what we're gonna do is we're all gonna team up together and we're gonna produce something. We're going to produce something. I don't know what it's going to be, but literally we're going to start ground zero and I'm going to walk you guys through what I would normally go through if we were producing um, some video content and stuff like that. So what we're going to do is uh, with any production and stuff like that, it takes teamwork. And I'm glad that you guys are all here and, and everybody's like nice and diverse and you know we have an even balance of like males and females and just creative mindsets. So what we're going to do is we're going to, um, I'm going to ask you guys, we're all volunteer for the positions, but We'll break you guys up into like teams, like individual teams and stuff like that. So we'll have like an audio team, we'll have a lighting team, we'll have like a social media team, we'll have a behind the scenes content team and stuff like that. And then we'll also need uh, writers and directors.